Good night, it's 6.50pm. We are on Tuesday the 25th of July 2023. I'm going to be sharing with you the Bible in one year and the day, the day that I'm going to be sharing is the day 297 and it is going to be from the book of Malachi, Obadiah, Wisdom 15, the Gospel of Luke 12, verses 1 to 34. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love entrusts me here, ever this night be at my side to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. O oh my God, I'm heartily sorry for having offended you, and I detest all my sins because of your punishments, but most of all because they offend you, my God who are all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve with the help of your grace to sin no more and to avoid the near occasions of sin. Holy Michael Archangel, defend me in this day of battle. Be my safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, I humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell Satan and all the wicked evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Before reading sacred scripture, open my heart, O Holy Spirit, to receive your inspired word. Grant me wisdom to understand what you want to teach me and strength of will to follow wherever you lead. Amen. I think I should put the microphone directly in front of me because it will stop me looking to the left when I should be just looking at the Bible. That should work better for me. A reading from the book of Malachi. I'll just check that it's Malachi. I have to read first. Yes, it's Malachi first. The book of Malachi. The book consists of six short passages, alternately on the day of Yahweh and on purity of observance. It is anonymous. For Malachi means merely my messenger. It stems from the mid-fifth century, some years after the return from the Babylonians' exile. Malachi chapter 1. A message. The word of Yahweh to Israel through Malachi. The title. The love of Yahweh for Israel. I have loved you, says Yahweh. But you ask, how have you shown your love? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, declares Yahweh? Even so, I loved Jacob, but I hated Esau. I turned his mountains into a desert and his heritage into dwellings in the wastelands. If Edom says, we have been struck down but we shall rebuild our ruins, Yahweh Sabaoth says this, let them build but I shall pull them down. 
they will be known as land of wickedness and nation with which Yahweh is angry for ever. You will see this yourselves and you will say Yahweh is mighty beyond the borders of Israel. The next heading, an indictment of the priests. The son honours his father. The slave stands in awe of his master. But if I am indeed father, where is the honour due to me? And if I am indeed master, where is the awe due to me? says Yahweh Sabaoth, to you priests who despise my name. You ask, how have we despised your name? By putting polluted food on my altar. You ask, how have we polluted you? By saying, the table of Yahweh deserves no respect. When you bring blind animals for sacrifice, is this not wrong? When you bring the lame and the diseased, is this not wrong? If you offer them to your governor, see if he is pleased with them or receives you graciously says Yahweh Sabaoth. In that case, try pleading with God to take pity on us. That is what you have done. And will he take any notice, says Yahweh Sabaoth? Why does one of you not close the doors and so stop the pointless lighting of fires on my altar. I am not pleased with you, says Yahweh Sabaoth. From your hands I find no offerings acceptable. But from farthest east to farthest west, my name is great among the nations and everywhere incense and a pure gift are offered to my name since my name is great among the nations says Yahweh Sabaoth but you have profaned it by saying the table of the Lord is polluted Hence the food offered on it deserves no respect. You say, how tiresome it all is, and sniff disdainfully at me, says Yahweh Sabaoth. You bring a stolen, lame or deceased animal. You bring that as an offering. Am I to accept this from you, says Yahweh Sabaoth. Cursed be the rogue who has a male in his flock but pays his vow by sacrificing a blemish, blemished animal to me. For well, I am a great king, says Yahweh Sabaoth, and among the nations my name inspires awe. The word of the Lord. A reading of chapter 2 from Malachi. And now, priests, this commandment is for you. If you will not listen, if you will not sincerely resolve to glorify my name, says Yahweh Sabaoth, I shall certainly lay a curse on you, and I shall curse your blessing. Indeed, I will lay a curse, for none of you makes this resolve. Now I am going to break your arm and throw offal 
in your faces. The offal of your solemn feasts and sweep you away with it. Then you will know that I sent this commandment to you to affirm my intention, to maintain my covenant with Levi, says Yahweh Sabaoth. My covenant was with him, a covenant of life and peace, and these were what I gave him, a covenant of respect, and he respected me and held my name in awe. The law of truth was in his mouth, and guilt was not found on his lips. He walked in peace and justice with me, and he converted many from sinning. The priest lips ought to safeguard knowledge. His mouth is where the law should be sought, since he is Yahweh Sabaoth's messenger. But you, yourselves, have turned aside from the way. You have caused many to lapse by your teaching. Since you have destroyed the covenant of Levi, says Yahweh Sabaoth, so I, in my turn, have made you contemptible and vile to the whole people for not having kept my ways and for being partial in applying the law. The next title, Mixed Marriage and Divorce. Is there not one father of us all? Did not one God create us? Why then do we break faith with one another, profaning the covenant of our ancestors? Judah has broken faith. A detestable thing has been done in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah has profaned Yahweh's beloved sanctuary. He has married the daughter of an alien God. May Yahweh deprive such an offender of witness and advocate in the tents of Jacob among those who present offerings to Yahweh Sabaoth. And here is something else you do. You cover the altar of Yahweh with tears, with weeping and wailing, because he now refuses to consider the offering or to accept it from you. And you ask, why? Because Yahweh stands as witness between you and the wife of your youth, with whom you have broken faith, even though she was your partner and your wife by covenant. Did he not create a single being, having flesh and the breath of life? And what does this single being seek? God-given offspring. Have respect for your own life then, and do not break faith with the wife of your youth. For I hate divorce, says Yahweh, God of Israel. And people concealing their cruelty under a cloak, says Yahweh Sabaoth. Have respect for your own life then, and do not break faith. The title, The Day of Yahweh. You have wearied Yahweh with your talk. You ask, how have we wearied him? When you say, any evil doer is good as far as Yahweh is concerned. Indeed, he is delighted with them. Or when you say, Where is the God of fair judgment now? The word of the Lord. 
A reading from the book of Malachi, chapter 3. Look, I shall send my messenger to clear a way before me. And suddenly the Lord whom you seek will come to his temple. Yes, the angel of the covenant for whom you long is on his way, says Yahweh Sabaoth. Who will be able to resist the day of his coming? Who will remain standing when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire, like fuller's alkali. He will take his seat as refiner and purifier. He will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver so that they can make the offering to Yahweh with uprightness. The offering of Judah and Jerusalem will then be acceptable to Yahweh as in former days, as in the years of old. I am coming to put you on trial and I shall be a ready witness against sorcerers, adulterers, perjurers and against those who oppress the wage earner the widow and the orphan, and who rob the foreigner of his rights and do not respect me, says Yahweh Sabaoth. The next title, Temple Tithes. No, I, Yahweh, do not change, and you, have not ceased to be children of Jacob. Ever since the days of your ancestors, you have evaded my statutes and not observed them. Return to me and I will return to you, says Yahweh Sabaoth. You ask, how are we to return? Can a human being cheat God? Yet, you try to cheat me. You ask, how do we try to cheat you? Over tithes and contributions? A curse lies on you because you, this whole nation, try to cheat me. Bring the tithes in full to the treasury so that there is food in my house. Put me to the test now like this says Yahweh Sabaoth, and see if I do not open the floodgates of heaven for you and pour out an abundant blessing on you. For your sakes, I shall forbid the locust to destroy the produce of your soil or prevent the vine from bearing fruit in your field, says Yahweh Sabaoth, and all the nations will call you blessed, for you will be a land of delights, says Yahweh Sabaoth. The next title, The Triumph of the Upright on the Day of Yahweh. You have said harsh things about me, says Yahweh, and yet you say, what have we said against you? You have said, it is useless to serve God. What is the good of keeping his commands or of walking mournfully before Yahweh's Sabaoth? In fact, we now call the proud the happy ones. The evildoers are the ones who prosper. They put God to the test, yet come to no harm. Then those who feared Yahweh talked to one another about this, and Yahweh took note and listened. And a book of remembrance was written in his presence, recording those who feared him and kept his name in mind. On the day when I act, says Yahweh Sabaoth, they will be my most prized possession 
and I shall spare them in the way a man spares the son who serves him. Then once again, you will see the difference between the upright person and the wicked one, between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. For look, the day is coming, glowing like a furnace. All the proud and all the evil doers will be the stubble, and the day, when it comes, will set them ablaze says Yahweh Sabaoth, leaving them neither root nor branch. But for you, who fear my name, the Son of Justice will rise with healing in his rays, and you will come out leaping like calves from the stall, and trample on the wicked who will be like ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says Yahweh Sabaoth. Last title, Appendices. Remember the law of my servant Moses, to whom at Horeb I prescribed decrees and rulings for all Israel. Look, I shall send you the prophet Elijah before the great and awesome day of Yahweh comes. He will reconcile parents to their children and children to their parents to forestall my putting the country under the curse of destruction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, I now have to go to Obadiah. Oh, let me just check where it is. But I'll just make sure before I go looking for it. So it is Obadiah and then Wisdom. So I have to look for Obadiah. Oh dear, where is it? Luke. Baruch. I thought I had marked it out. So let me just see if I can find it. I've only got a ribbon there. Okay just fix myself up a bit because I need a drink of water before I continue. Sorry. Thank you. The Book of Obadiah, this short prophecy half of which, 1 to 9, is closely paralleled in Jeremiah 49, proclaims revenge on the Edomites who helped destroy Jerusalem after the siege of 587 BC. It must, Jeremiah 49 proclaims, revenge on the Edomites who helped destroy Jerusalem after the siege of 587 BC. It must date from soon after this. A reading from the book of Obadiah, the title Vision of Obadiah about Edom, a reading from the prologue I have received a message from Yahweh. A herald has been sent throughout the nations. Up, let us march against this people into battle. The next title is Sentence Pronounced on Edom. The Lord Yahweh says this, Look, I have reduced you to the smallest of nations. You are now beneath contempt. Your proud heart has misled you. You whose home is in the crannies of the rock. 
who make the heights your dwelling, who think to yourself, who can bring me down to earth? Though you soar like an eagle, though you set your nest among the stars, I shall bring you down from there, declares Yahweh. The next title, The Annihilation of Edom. If thieves were to come to you, or robbers during the night, Surely they would steal only as much as they wanted? If grape pickers were to come to you, surely they would leave a few gleanings? But how you have been pillaged, how Esau has been looted, his hidden treasures routed out, your ally allies all pursued you, right to the frontier. Your confederates kept you in suspense, then got the better of you. Your own guests laid a trap for you. He has quite lost his wits. When that day comes, declares Yahweh, shall I not eliminate sages from Edom? and intelligence from Mount Esau. Your warriors, T-Man, will be so demoralized that the people of Mount Esau will be massacred to the last one. The next title, The Guilt of Edom. For the slaughter, for the violence done to your brother Jacob, Shame will cover you, and you will be annihilated forever. On the day when you stood aloof, while strangers carried off his riches, while foreigners passed through his gate and cast lots for Jerusalem, you were as bad as the rest of them. Do not feast your eyes on your brother, on the day of his misfortune. Do not gloat over the children of Judah on the day of their ruin. Do not play the braggart on the day of distress. Do not enter my people's gate on their day of calamity. Do not, you especially, feast your eyes on their sufferings on their day of calamity. Do not touch their possessions on their day of calamity. Do not wait at the crossroads to annihilate their fugitives. Do not hand over their survivors on the day of distress. For the day of Yahweh is near for all the nations. As you have done, so it will be done to you. Your deeds will recoil on your own head. The next title. The Day of Yahweh, Israel Revenged on Edom. Just as you have drunk on my holy mountain, so will all the nations drink continually. They will drink, will drink greedily, but they will be as though they had never been. But on Mount Zion will be those who have escaped. It will be a sanctuary and the house of Jacob will recover what is rightfully theirs. Then the house of Jacob will be a fire, the house of Joseph a flame and the house of Esau like stubble. They will set it alight and burn it up. And no one of the house of Esau will survive. Yahweh has spoken. The final title. The New Israel. People from the Negev will occupy the Mount of Esau. People from the lowlands, the country of the Philistines. They will occupy Ephraim and Samaria. 
and Benjamin will occupy Gilead. The exiles of this army, the sons of Israel, will have the Canaanites' land as far as Zarapetha. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I now have to go and read Wisdom 15. I believe it's 15. But I'll just double check before I read it. I don't want to make any more mistakes than I've already done. Okay, it's Wisdom 15 and then Luke 12. A reading from the Book of Wisdom, chapter 15. And the titles, there's quite a few, but one at a time. The first title is Israel Not Idolatrous. But you, our God, are kind and true, slow to anger, governing the universe with mercy. Even if we sin, we are yours, since we acknowledge your power, but we will not sin, knowing we count as yours. To know you is indeed the perfect virtue and to know your power is the root of immortality we have not been duped by inventions of misapplied human skill or by the sterile work of painters by figures daubed with assorted colours the sight of which sets fools yearning and hankering for the lifeless form of an unbreathing image. Lovers of evil and worthy of such hopes are those who make them, those who want them, and those who worship them. The next title, The Makers of Idols are Fools. Take a potter now, laboriously working the soft earth, shaping each object for us to use. Out of the same clay, he models vessels intended for a noble use, and those for a contrary purpose all alike. But which of these two uses each will have is for the potter himself to decide. Then, ill-spent effort from the same clay he models a futile god, although so recently made out of earth himself, and shortly to return to what he was taken from, when asked to give back the soul that has been lent to him. Even so, he does not worry about having to die, or about the shortness of his life, that strives to outdo the goldsmiths and silversmiths, imitates the bronze workers, and prides himself on modelling counterfeits. Ashes his heart, more vile than earth, his hope, more wretched than clay, his life. For he has misconceived the one who has modelled him who breathed an active soul into him and inspired a living spirit. What is more, he looks on this life of ours as a kind of game and our time here like a fair, full of bargains. However foul the means, he says, a man must make a living. He more than any other knows he is sinning. He who from one earthy stuff makes both brittle pots and idols. The next heading, the folly of the Egyptians, their indiscriminate idolatry. But the most foolish... More pitiable even than the soul of a little child are the enemies who once played the tyrant with your people and have taken all the idols of the heathen for gods. 
These can use neither their eyes for seeing, nor their nostrils for breathing the air, nor their ears for hearing, nor the fingers in their hands for handling, nor their feet for walking. They have been made, you see, by a human being, modelled by a being whose own breath is borrowed. No man can model a god to resemble himself, subject to death. His impious hands can produce only something dead. He himself is worthier than the things he worships. He will at least have lived, but never they. And they worship even the most loathsome of animals, worse than the rest in their decree of stupidity without a trace of beauty. If that is what is attractive in animals and excluded from God's praises and blessing, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So now I have to go to read the Gospel of Luke. Let me just check again that I'm going to be reading the right words. So, wisdom was the last one. So, Luke 12, 1 to 34. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 12. The title is Open and Fearless Speech. Meanwhile, the people had gathered in their thousands so that they were treading on one another. And he began to speak, first of all to his disciples, be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, their hypocrisy. Everything now covered up will be uncovered, and everything now hidden will be made clear. For this reason, whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight, and what you have whispered in hidden places will be proclaimed from the housetops. To you, my friends, I say, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that can do no more. I will tell you whom to fear. Fear him who after he has killed, has the power to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, he is the one to fear. Can you not buy five sparrows for two pennies? And yet not one is forgotten in God's sight. Why, every hair on your head has been counted. There is no need to be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. I tell you, if anyone openly declares himself for me in the presence of human beings, the Son of Man will declare himself for him in the presence of God's angels. But anyone who disowns me in the presence of human beings will be disowned in the presence of God's angels. Everyone who says a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But no one who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will be forgiven. When they take you before synagogues and magistrates and authorities, do not worry about how to defend yourselves or what to say, because when the time comes, the Holy Spirit will teach you what you should say. The next title, On Hoarding Possessions, 
A man in the crowd said to him, Master, tell my brother to give me a share of our inheritance. He said to him, My friend, who appointed me your judge or the arbiter of your claims? Then he said to them, Watch and be on your guard against avarice of any kind, for life does not consist in possessions, even when someone has more than he needs. Then he told them a parable. There was once a rich man, having had a good harvest from his land, thought to himself, What am I to do? I have not enough room to store my crops. Then he said, This is what I will do. I will pull down my barns and build bigger ones and store all my grain and my goods in them. And I will say to my soul, My soul, you have plenty of good things laid up by for many years to come. Take things easy, eat, drink, have a good time. But God said to him, Fool, this very night the demand will be made for your soul. And this hoard of yours, whose will it be then? So it is when someone stores up treasure for himself instead of becoming rich in the sight of God. The next title, Trust in Providence. Then he said to his disciples, That is why I am telling you not to worry about your life and what you are to eat, nor about your body and how you are to clothe it. For life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Think of the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storehouses and no barns, yet God feeds them. And how much more you are worth than the birds. Can any of you, however much you worry, add a single cubit to your span of life? If a very small thing is beyond your powers, why worry about the rest? Think how the flowers grow. They never have to spin or weave, yet I assure you, not even Solomon in all his royal robes was clothed like one of them. Now, if that is how God clothes a flower, which is growing wild today and is thrown into the furnace tomorrow, how much more will he look after you who have so little faith? But you must not set your hearts on things to eat and things to drink, nor must you worry. It is the Gentiles of this world who set their hearts on all these things. Your Father well knows you need them. No, set your hearts on his kingdom, and these other things will be given you as well. There is no need to be afraid, little flock. For it has pleased your father to give you the kingdom. I just need to check whether I need to read verse 34 or not. Yes, I do. It says 234. So I will read that. Um, The title is On Almsgiving. Sell your possessions and give to those in need. Get yourselves purses that do not wear out, treasure that will not fail you in heaven where no thief can reach it and no moth destroy it. For wherever your treasure is, that is where your heart will be. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for listening. May God bless you and heal you. I'm sending you his peace in abundance and may you always be happy and joyful in the Lord. After reading sacred scripture, I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the word you have spoken to me.
through the treasure of the scripture. Make these words a living reality in my life, a constant guide, a lamp for my feet and a light to my path. Amen. Holy Spirit, live in me, pray in me, guide me and let Christ live in me. Amen. God bless you all. Sending you the peace of Christ. Always be happy and joyful in the Lord. And God bless the rest of your evening, day, morning or afternoon. God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you.